Hey there everybody, welcome. It's Josh Carey here. We're gonna get started in just a few minutes as everybody trickles in. All right, so it seems to be a couple of minutes after the hour. So I will slowly get going. I wanna say hello and a uh, big welcome to everybody for joining me tonight. I am Josh Carey, and just so you know, I'm flying here solo tonight, so if you type in a question in the box, which I totally encourage and want you to do as we move along, uh, and I don't immediately respond to it, please understand that I will get to it. And some people have been asking me if this is going to be recorded, and it is going to be recorded, so if you're attending, uh, there there's expected to be a lot of info that I'm going to cover. So it, it is something that you will have to resort back to in a recording. Again, I want to thank everybody for attending my walking tour of WordPress webinar. So uh, this is the walking tour of WordPress subtitled why WordPress is the only website building tool you'll need. And what the goal of this webinar is, is really to give you a complete working knowledge of how to use WordPress for your pet sitting business website. And what this is going to do is put you in complete control of your entire site. You'll be able to edit your own pages, create pages, delete them. You'll add images and a, a, a whole lot more. You won't have to rely on a designer and you don't have to work with site builders that may be a little complex. So whether you have no knowledge at this point of what WordPress is, or you want to take your current ability even a bit further, I got you covered tonight. So let's begin with what will you learn today? Today we're going to cover a few things. What exactly is WordPress? why to use WordPress anyway in the first place, how exactly to use WordPress. We're going to take a live look into a working WordPress site. That'll be our, uh, our walking tour. Towards the end, I'm also going to give you an inside peek into my pet sitting website system, which is completely WordPress powered and completely designed to give you, the pet sitter, an out of the box, complete, ready to go WordPress website. And finally, we will have our Q&A session. Your questions will be answered. So who am I and how did I arrive at all this? Well. I've been building websites for small businesses in general for almost 12 years now. Um, I crossed paths with a popular New York City pet sitting business owner in 2007. I had a, an adorable little Shih Tzu named Clover, and at one point I needed a place to bring her. I was sick and tired of the kennel system and the doggy hotel systems, so that's what brought me to a pet sitter to begin with. and. Not only was I a big fan of the service from, from a pet owner's point of view, but I also loved the concept of this small business that was pet sitting. So me and the owner started talking for a while and we built a great business relationship and we started talking about the business end of it. And I just found that I had a, a, a great passion for the business. And in 2008, me and Alicia created our own New York City pet business, Alicia's Animals. And the great thing about that was that I just took my, my, my skill and talent from building websites over the past several years and I created our website while Alicia handled the phones and sold the service to the clients. And we were able to reach six figures in the first year and I attribute that success so much to the website. It really became twofold. It was not only able to rank well in Google for a lot of good keywords, but almost as importantly is once a visitor landed on our site, we were able to convert that visitor into a lead, into a potential client. Because as I always say, if you rank well in Google and someone visits your site, but they're not taking action once they're on your site, half the battle is lost, right? So 
I was able to develop a website and tweak it along the way that made it able to convert visitors once they were on the site. And in 2009, that's when I created Pet Sittingology, which started as a blog and was just designed to give my insight on how I succeeded with Alicia's animals and my website knowledge to the pet sitting community. And then from there, I was able to co-found Association of Pet Sitting Excellence, the APSE, with Danielle Shinodi in 2010. So that's the brief overview of who I am and how I got involved in this wonderful world we call pet sitting. So now we're going to move on to part one, which is what exactly is WordPress? Excuse me for a minute as I take a sip of water. All right. What exactly is WordPress? Well, most people do know WordPress as a blog, a place where you can write articles and submit comments. And it did launch some years ago as a blog, but over time, people started noticing the strength and effectiveness of WordPress itself to be able to create more than simply posts and articles. So now literally millions of fully functioning websites are created and powered fully and exclusively by the WordPress platform since it has evolved into a full-fledged content management system or a CMS. So just like some of you might be familiar with your GoDaddy web building tool, for example, or your Yahoo's web building tool, those are all content management systems too. So hopefully after tonight, you'll see the better benefit of using WordPress for all of your pet sitting websites. Now, before we make our way on, I ask you off the bat, on a scale of one to 10, what do you say your comfort level with WordPress is right now? And then I want to compare it at the end. So type it in a box. If you're not familiar with WordPress at all, put a one. If you have some sort of working knowledge, adjust accordingly. But I just want to get a feel for where everybody is. All right, so let me see on a scale of one to 10. Okay. It looks like a lot of people are at one or two. We have some fives and sixes and a, um, a 9.5 from Rita. Well, hopefully I can bump that 0.5 up to the full 10 after tonight. Who knows? Um, all right, so um, we're good to go. So now I ask you, why should we be using WordPress anyway? Well, for one thing, WordPress is free. That means that anyone can use it. It doesn't cost anything to use. It's very user friendly. Basically, if you can create a Microsoft Word document, you can point and click your way around WordPress. Third, Google loves it. And you may have heard this before, and it's important to really understand why Google loves sites build with, built with WordPress so much. And the reason is this. It's simply because the HTML code that WordPress generates for your web pages is clean and easy for Google to read. Okay? And it's the HTML code itself of any web page on the internet, not the visual browser display how you and I view a website, but it's that HTML code that search engines like Google look through to best determine what that page is all about. So then they can properly place it in their search results for a given keyword. So to put it another way, if your website builder creates messy code from the way you're building your page, Google will not easily understand the content of the page and simply won't be able to place it high in the search results for that page. Now, this is a really important fact to understand why Google loves WordPress so much and the fact that it creates HTML code so neatly and cleanly. And again, it's that very code that Google needs to sift through and read to decipher and understand where to place your page in the search engines. So because that's so important to understand, 
Does everyone get the idea behind this part and why it makes sense that Google would love a site created with WordPress? Type yes in the questions box to the right if you understand this concept. All right, beautiful. Now keep that in mind because I just can't stress that when we are looking at a website, it's not the same way that search engines do. It's all about that HTML code behind the scenes. Okay, so I'm glad you got it. And finally, why use WordPress? Really because there are literally, literally zero limitations. And what I mean is whatever you can think to quote unquote create with a regular website or with any other site builder, the answer is yes, you can achieve it with WordPress. You could put anything and everything you've seen on any other site on the internet in a WordPress website. So it just makes sense. Now part three, we get to the walking tour. Now we're going to look at how to actually use WordPress. And from here, it's all about, we're going to go online and it's all about entering the system through a username and password protected area. And then you enter into your WordPress admin dashboard. So in order to access your own WordPress admin dashboard on your own WordPress installation, you're going to visit yourdomain.com, whatever your website is, .com, slash wp-admin. That's how you're going to access this page. And this is the page you're going to see when you visit your domain, your website, .com, slash wp-admin. And you're going to enter in your username and password and lo and behold we enter our magnificent WordPress admin dashboard this is your dashboard where do we begin now from here you could literally access everything take a look on the left hand side here this obviously is your menu you have your full menu options here you'll most typically only use a few of these very few of these on a regular basis. You'll use posts, you'll use pages, you might use plugins, and you'll use settings. Now we're going to go through all of this. So we're going to look at each one. Now keep in mind that if I do not touch on a certain feature as we move along, it's safe at this point to ignore it. Basically that means that you'll either most likely need to mess with it at all, or it's a more advanced feature for, for later on. All right? We'll start at the top here, the big yellow bar. One of the great things about WordPress is the ability for it to update the software in one click. Security is very important. Keeping everything updated is very important. And whenever there is immediately a new version of WordPress, you will be alerted with this big yellow bar up here. If you look down here, you see I am using an older version. 3.3.1. It wants me to update to 3.4. So in order to update, which I suggest you do as soon as you see that bar, you're going to click, please update now. And it's literally in one click, all housed within your dashboard. I'm not going to do it, but you just click update now. And in about 10 seconds tops, it will update your entire site. You could also update your plugins right here which is also always recommended. So now we go back to the dashboard. Let us begin with posts. One question I always get is what's the big difference between a post and a page? And it's very simple. A post is typically when you're reading on a blog, an article, any sort of an article, that you can share on Facebook, that you can leave a comment on, that's a post. So until you're ready to start blogging or writing articles, you'll be creating pages. So again, posts are for when you're writing an article that you want people to share on Facebook and Twitter and you want people to comment on. But 
for our purpose, posts and pages from within WordPress are created very much the same. So I'm not going to talk about, I'm not going to uh, click on post right now because again, it's very much the same when we get to pages and you'll see exactly what I mean. So media is, this is great. Your media library, this is where all of your uploaded images, your photos, your pictures, even your forms, your documents, your audio and video files, there's no limit to what you could have in your media library, what sort of uh, document or image or format, right? You can upload any sort of image, any sort of media, and you're going to do this directly from your your post or page most typically that's where you're going to upload the media so I'm just showing you this sort of secondary um, because this is where you could do things like edit a picture if you have something uploaded here this is what I love uh, it has a whole edit thing first you could you can alter the title or alt text but more to the point, if you click on edit image, you can then do a whole host of things right here within WordPress. Let me show you a few of these. Click here, you can rotate it. You can flip it, you can flip it horizontally. You could also scale the image. So if it's too big, let's say I wanna cut it in half. So right now it says 600 by 488. I want to scale it in half. So I'll put 300 and look, it automatically adjusts it. So when I click scale, it's going to create a smaller picture. So this is good for design and, and that sort of a stuff. Plus, if I want to, I can crop right here as well. I just grab my mouse and I can crop this image right in WordPress anywhere I want and then just click save and you are good to go whenever you're done just click update media and that's that now this is how you would obviously edit some sort of picture you're never really gonna need the library to upload your media because again you'll be able to upload any piece of media directly from a page or a post which is very convenient all right let me just take a quick sip and we are moving along again I'm gonna skip certain things you could safely ignore them for now so now we'll go to pages this is where you'll spend the bulk of your time right here so I have, I have this populated let me show you the website that this is attached to it's this earlier in the webinar I told you that uh, later on I'll, I'll show you a um, a WordPress powered pet sitting website system that I offer and this is basically the out of the box template that you would get with that so it comes installed with these eight pages fully loaded with content already there all you'd have to do is replace this content and move along and you're good to go so these are the pages that we are dealing with okay this is the site we're dealing with so let's say I want to edit my about page I might have a new a new piece of information I want to tell my visitors I might have a new uh, pet sitter on board I want to write about so when you hover over any of the pages you'll see you're presented with these options edit quick edit you'll probably never need you can trash it you know delete it or you can view it this is simply viewing it how your visitor would see it. So to edit, you can either click edit or you can just click the about us. And here we are in the edit page. Up here, you have your options, just like Microsoft Word. Sometimes when you enter a page, you're gonna see it like this you'll only see one row. And I've gotten emails that say, help, I, I only see one row. I don't see that second row you're talking about. I don't even know why WordPress makes this an option or a feature, but 
they have this thing called show hide the kitchen sink. So basically, if you only see one row, you're just going to click on that and that'll open everything up. Also, on the right here, we have two tabs. We have a visual, which is what we're seeing visually, and we have an HTML tab. If you click on this, you have complete control to edit any piece of the HTML. If you want to deal with it, if you like to deal in HTML for some reason for certain things, you can certainly do it right here. But most typically, you'll want to work in the visual. Here's where you're going to uh, have your publish options. You could preview your changes before publishing at any point. You don't even need to save. It just automatically saves for you as you type. So anytime you click preview changes, you'll get to see a preview of what you've been dealing with. You can change your status from published or a draft if for some reason you want to take it offline for a minute. Your visibility is interesting because you could actually, any page you want, and I've actually had pet sitters who use my system email me and say, hey, how can I password protect a page? How could I put certain forms perhaps behind a page that I only want clients that I direct to that page to type in a password and download the documents. Maybe you don't want snooping eyes all over your documents or over uh, an image gallery. Perhaps you put a client's pictures behind a password protected page and you tell her, hey, look what I took of your dog and look at this video. It's uploaded on my website. Check it out here and here's the password so only you can see it. So obviously all you got to do is click password protected. It'll ask you for the password and you click OK. Private is a whole different story. Private is only admins can see it. You'll probably never in a million years need that. I, to this day, have never needed that private function. So we keep it there. And then published, you could actually, I mean, this is more to the point if you're doing a post, but you can, uh, you can um, create a post, an article, even a page, and then post date it. Set it to go, set it to go live automatically on a future date. So that's why you'd want to mess with this. And then of course you can move it to trash. Here you're probably never going to have to worry about these page attributes. All right, let me get my screen back to where it was for you. So back to the edit page. Up here we have the title. This is most typically let me show you the page we're actually dealing with. The title, whatever you put up here, is most typically going to be on your menu bar. And I'll show you later that you can change the menu bar separate from the page title. And it's also going to be at the top. And it's also at the very top of the title tag, which is oh, a big SEO factor. So those are where your titles come into play. And finally, uh, your, your URL. WordPress will automatically take your title and create it as part of the URL with dashes. And that is the recommended way that Google likes it. Now, there are times you might have a page title or even a post with a very long title. And maybe you don't want that long title to be in the URL, which is acceptable. I've created articles that have a, a lengthy post title, but I don't need that to be the entire URL. So all you need to do is click edit and you could adjust whatever you need it to be. Certainly you, you would probably go in the other direction and you would take your long post title and just create it to like, let's say I wanted to say about. But in any case, what I do recommend is if you're going to edit your page titles, and I do recommend you doing this before you, you uh, launch it live. It's not the end of the world if you do it afterwards. But if you're going to edit your page titles, instead of doing a space between words, you want to do a simple dash. Right? And then you just click OK. And then this becomes the new page title.
Now here is your content. Like I say, it's just like really creating a Word document. Up here, you have your bold, italics, your lists, your quote. You can move things to the left. You can center things on the page. Click center, it automatically centers. You can create links over here. If I want to link this to something, I just highlight it, click this link, insert edit link. And by the way, as you see, if I hover over any one of these and just stay hovered, it'll show me what it is. Okay, so if I want to create this into a link, just click that link and then this wonderful box pops up. I could either enter in the URL of the web page or if I'm linking to a page on my site, this is awesome, I can just click this and it will automatically populate that page on my current site. Then you just click add link and we are linked. So I don't believe I have to spend a lot of time on this. You could bold, you could underline, you can change the color right here. You have your pre-populated colors here, or if you want, click on more colors and we get the wheel. And you can choose whatever you wish. Over here, paste from Word. Now, I know a lot of people like to create their content before they put it on a website in Microsoft Word. It's a common thing to do. That's why WordPress added this here. Word is a very peculiar program that it's, it, it's, I don't even know how to say it. Just if, if you copy from a Microsoft Word document and you paste it directly into here, it's going to be a little funky. It's going to add certain things from Microsoft Word that, that, that doesn't play well with WordPress. So basically, if you're going to do that and you're going to copy it from Word, just click paste from Word. And then here is where you paste your content. And these sorts of things are unnecessary. But if you click here, you have a help and this will provide you with some basics that you can use. Now scrolling down, I have a few SEO plugins that we'll get to soon. So a lot of this is about that, but a lot of this you won't even have to deal with, including the only SEO plugin I, um, I really recommend is this one, All-in-One SEO Pack. And again, we'll get into this uh, a little later when we talk about plugins. Um, but if, if you wanted to define a specific title tag and description and keywords for this page, here is where you do it. But the great thing about this plugin is that it will optimize all of your pages by you just defining your, your general title tag. Like for example, let's say I wanted to say New York sitting, pet sitting business and dog walking across all pages. I will define that in the plugin and it will automatically put that in all my pages. So you'll, you don't really have to worry about defining SEO title tags, description and keyword meta tags for each ind individual page unless you really have some specific reason for doing so and most typically you will not. So that's what that is. That is the page but before we move on I will talk about this. I kept saying when we were talking about media that you're not really gonna have to use this. If you want to upload a picture or upload a document, you click here, upload, insert, add media, and what this is going to do is give you the ability to select from your computer anything you need. So I just typed this in, I just uploaded it, and now I can insert this into my page and then I would click insert into post. Make sure to look at alignment here. If you want it flush to the left, 
around your content, just like this one over on the right is wrapped around the content, you would do right. Or if you just want it on a line of its own. And the size, it's trying to ask me if I want it a little smaller. I usually like going with full size, but actually this full size is, is very big for the web. So it's, it's sort of correct by saying we'll make it medium. So I would stick with that and then just click insert into post. And then it is where it is. And then from here, you can click and edit the image. If you want to make it a little smaller, let's say I want to make it 70% smaller. I would click that. And let me show you this in the other. I'm going to delete that. And one quick thing. When I upload an image, it will automatically, in the link URL here, in the link URL, it's going to populate the file URL. I don't need the image to link to the image. So I always click this to none. There you go. Now it's not going to link. If you wanted the image to link somewhere, uh, you can type it right in there. But I rarely do. So that, for the most part, and then of course when you're done, you click uh, publish or update changes or whatever the case may be. So that is pages all said and done. I'm going to go on to appearance. Really in appearance, you're going to deal with menus. See, it's asking me if I want to leave because it knows that I made changes and it didn't yet save. So I'm going to leave page. And we go to the menu. This, of course, is our top menu bar here. When you create a new page, it doesn't automatically, well, it actually depends on the actual theme you're using, but it doesn't always automatically add the page to your menu bar. So what you want to do is after you create the page, you want to come over here and make sure you add it to your menu bar. Just like, let's say I wanted to add this page, just click it. And if you don't see your pages here, you can go to view all, or you could even search for a page. But here are the most recent. So if I want to add this to my menu bar, I would click it and click add to menu. And then it comes over here. Now the great thing, is that I can just hover over this until I get those crosshairs and drag it where I want it to be. So if I want it here, I can do that. Furthermore, I could open it up over here and I could change what the label says. So if the page is called Homepage Intro 2, but I don't want my visitors clicking on something that says Homepage Intro 2, I want them clicking on something that says Intro. There we go. Then I would just save it down here. What also I can do is do something easily called nested menus where you have the drop down. So Instead of hovering it directly over, you see when I move it over, it indents a little bit. Now, if I save my changes and revisit my site, I'll refresh this. Now it gives me the little thing here where I hover over it. It gives me the arrow and it automatically places it under it. So I can have as many sub menus as I wish. So that is menus. Now we go to plugins. What is a plugin? Well, a plugin is simply a third party piece of code that adds specific functionality to your blog. Uh, there are some examples like an SEO plugin, a backup plugin, a contact form, 
a, uh, a quote rotator form, a Google site map, a photo gallery. These are all the ones I have. Now, you want to be careful though and don't go plug-in crazy because the more plugins you have, the slower your site can become because a plugin has to add a bunch of new code to your site and they don't all work well together depending on what the reputation of the plugin creator is. Uh, so there are there are literally plugins that will help you achieve anything you want, anything you could even think of, everything from e-commerce, forums, a photo gallery, to an events calendar, contact forms, like I said. So there are plugins for everything, and this is where all of your plugins reside. Now, I use and recommend for the Pet Sitter website about 10. We have the SEO, the backup, the contact form, etc. Uh, so once you install a plugin, you could go to add new over here. If you have a plugin that you want to install, you thought of something or you heard of one and you want to install it on your site. We're going to go to install plugins. Now, if you don't know which one you want to use, but you want to find a good SEO plugin, in this term box right here, you'll type in SEO, and we're going to search plugins. And what we're searching is the WordPress plugins database. They house all of these plugins. So here we typed in SEO, and you see you have, you're going to have a bunch of options. So what you can do is you can read, you can see the star ratings and click on details first and this very convenient box will pop up. So here's on the SEO, uh, you click on details and this is from the WordPress website where the plugin is housed and this is a good gauge. You really want to deal with a plugin that is useful and popular and this one it says it's been downloaded 707,000 times. That's, that seems a little reputable to me, right? Here's an average rating of four out of five stars based on 168 ratings. So this is probably a really good one. You can read up here how to install it. I mean, not how to install it. Uh, yeah, how to install it. See some screenshots if you want, read an FAQ, or you can click install now and within three to five seconds it will install on your site. For those that uh, aren't familiar, I keep do using I, I keep using the phrase SEO. That is search engine optimization. Those are all the all the all the ways that you optimize your website to rank better in Google. So this is where you would search for plugins and install them on your site. Now we're going to move over to users. Now a user, most likely you will be the only user of your website. This is where you control your profile. Remember when we first entered and we and we went to uh, ourdomain.com slash wp-admin? That is where you type in your username and password. So here, if I want to edit my profile, my user, I can do so here. You want to make sure your email address is accurate because that's where the system might send some stuff. And also, your, your username or your display name, as it says here, will most typically be used on the top of a page or post where it says, posted on June 20th, 2012 by Joshua. That's where it's getting the information from. And you can actually pull this down and determine how you want to be identified on your site. You can't change your username, but you can change your display name here and here, which would affect how it, how it looks publicly. If, for whatever reason, you want to change your username, you could just create a new user and just start using that username if, for some reason, you had a reason to do so. 
Finally, if you want to change your password, which I do suggest whatever password you create to log in to your WordPress admin dashboard via the WP-admin, you want to make sure it's, as you've always heard about passwords, not easy to guess because there are, there are hacking programs into WordPress, etc. So uh, if you ever need to update or change your password, scroll all the way down here and enter in new password. Your bio, if and when you start blogging and writing articles, sometimes you've seen this at the bottom of a post, it'll give a little bio of the poster. That's where you would enter it and then update profile and you are good to go. Now we're going to move into settings. There are a lot here, but you're not going to need most of these. Your site title is typically what is involved in your SEO efforts, in your title tag. So you want to make sure your site title is, is pretty accurate to, to what you want it to say in your title tag. And to show you right here, my site title is Joshua Carey Pet Sitter. So if I go over to any page on the site here, if you look all the way up at the top bar here, it says the page name with a little separator, and then it says my site title, Joshua Carey Pet Sitter. So if I wanted it to say Alicia's Animals, New York City Pet Sitting and Dog Walking, I would put it right here and then update. And I'll show you on the SEO plugin how that transfers to every page on my site. You're not going to have to mess with any of this. Again, this email address, whoops, this email address right here in settings under general, this is where you're going to get notification as it says for admin purposes. Uh, if you have a comment that's waiting approval or somebody just posted a comment or something like that. So you want to make sure that this is an accurate email address of yours. All of this stuff is self-explanatory. Then we want to go to permalinks. Simply put, I don't even know why WordPress does this, but by default, if you see up here default, when you create a page, the URL, the web address, instead of it becoming slash page name, like about us, as we saw in the page title, it wants it to become this weird question mark P equal one, two, three. And Google doesn't like seeing that. Google actually wants to see a page title, a page URL with as much information about what's on that page as possible. That's why when you're naming your pages and you're, you're discovering what the URL, the web address of that page is going to be, it's very important to consider Google. So you don't want to stuff keywords in there, but your page URL, the .html, what is up there is very important. So you want to name your page accurate to what is on that page. So basically, you're just going to make sure that this one is selected, post name. And, and for the record, this pet sitting website system that I offer, all of this becomes standard out of the box. So everything I'm going over is already done for you. So if you already have a WordPress website, some of these changes might not be uh, in effect. So you'll want to go back and make sure that, for example, here, post name is selected. Now in settings, because I have a plugin, all in one SEO plugin, this is where you define site wide tags. We scroll down. They allow you to define specifically to the home page, a specific home page title, a description and keywords. I don't. Uh, but if you if you click on any of these, you'll see that it will pull up some help. It'll tell you what it's about. So, and this is all defaulted. I didn't even touch any of this because I'm happy with it. My post title and page titles, 
For example, every page I create is automatically going to have the page title, and now I'm talking about in the title tag, which again is one of the strongest points you can make to help your site rank in Google. The title tag, again, is, is the big browser top bar up here, and it's also the big blue link in the Google search results that people click on. That's why it's so important. So your page title, followed by that separator, and then the blog title. Now they're using the word blog here, but it's, it's your page title. No, I'm sorry. It's your blog title, which is that site title. So that is the page title, in this example, about us, the separator, and your blog title, which is that site title, which was Joshua Carey Pet Sitter at this point. So all you have to do is define this once, and WordPress will handle the rest. All right, let me just take a quick drink of water here while we're stopped. Thank you, Tracy. She said, so much information. Can you do another webinar next week? Perhaps, I guess we'll see, right? Go through this once again and um, let me know how you find it. Uh, but how's everybody enjoying? Everybody keeping up? Everybody getting, getting some value so far? I'm hitting on the right, the right areas. All right, everybody's saying yes. Rita says, yes, very helpful. Sherry says, loving it, thank you. Kim, all good, very good. Melanie says, great, lots of info. Excellent, great. All right, so I know uh, Melanie said, lots of info, but very helpful. Yes, I, I, I preface this by saying there is a lot of info. And you know, really, the best thing is going to be to just, what I like to do is just dive in to your own WordPress admin dashboard. You really can't break this thing. You know, you could always resort back to old uh, versions of pages. Like I said, uh, WordPress always saves versions of your page so if you ever mess it up and you need to resort back to an older version you really can't mess up this system so the best thing is gonna be to just just get in there and sort of play around with it and and yes I know I'm getting a lot of info in here that's why we're, we're recording it and it'll be yours to keep and watch as often as you wish so what else is down here under settings these just have to do with some plugins that I installed and the XML sitemap is very cool and important to search engines including Google and Bing. What this does, what this sitemap plugin does is automatically every time you create a new post article or a page, every time you create a new piece of content, WordPress is automatically going to alert Google and Bing and says there was a problem notifying ask, but okay. So uh, it's automatically going to alert the search engines that, hey, this site just added a piece of content, add it to your search engine, that sort of a thing. And again, it happens automatically. These three down here are plugin specific. Certain plugins that you install are pretty big and robust that they will require their own settings. So like this is for the contact form, this is for the photo gallery, and this is for automatic backups. Uh, I, I include an automatic backup of your entire WordPress site with my pet sitting uh, website system here that every week or every month or every day, whatever you want, you can set it to automatically back up your files. You could have them back up to something like Amazon Cloud or Dropbox, or you can have them send you an email with the backup, whatever you want. So that just happens automatically. All right, I want to show you really quick what this whole site is about here that I keep referencing. Like I said, um, Laura Roder and I, about a year and a half ago, started developing this uh, WordPress website system for pet sitters, and it's based on the exact 
elements that I use for my own pet sitting business, Alicia's Animals, and what I attribute all of the success to. Things like a prominent contact form on the page here, a, a, a nice um, uh, um, quote rotator with reviews, your social networks. It has a, um, a, a gallery here that slides through. You can embed your Facebook here. One of the things I always talk about is having a great big call to action at the bottom of all your pages. So when your visitor is done reading, they know exactly what to do next. So the reason I'm showing you this is because here, this is specific to the pet sitter website system that we have. I have about 30 pet sitters on board right now that have helped me add functionality and adjust things to make this the perfect tool for pet sitters. For example, here, you can change your site background color in one click. You just click this and move it to whatever you want. And then whenever you're done making changes, you just always want to click save all changes here. You can upload a background image. You can choose your font that you want your site to have. Select the size. You could adjust the menu bar background color to whatever you wish. You can upload your logo right here. You can add a little favicon over here. That's the little thing in the browser. If you have Google Analytics, which I always suggest you do, it's free, it's easy, take the code they give you and place it right there and you're good to go. If you sort of know how to tinker with CSS, which is basically adding other elements to your site, you can adjust the CSS code here. Now this is pretty cool. This call to action over here, you could have this say whatever you want. If you want to change it, you just change it right here. Then in the footer, we have a tagline and a copyright. So down here, you write whatever tagline you want, and you also have your copyright, which should include your business name and location. Because we are local service providers, you do want to include your city and state. That'll help Google, that'll help your users. And that is all right here. Now, if you want to include your own Facebook box like this, all you have to do is type in your Facebook URL and it will automatically create your own box right there. That's this page. Now over here, social media settings. On the side here, I have the four most popular social networks. So, the images are already uploaded for you. If you want to use Facebook, you just put your Facebook URL. The icon is already here for you. And you just put your Twitter URL. If you don't want any of these, like let's say you don't use LinkedIn, you'd simply click this red button here. And now you don't use it. Finally, the footer logo settings. We all like logos on the bottom of our page, so we have our credentials, we have our affiliations. We give you space for four of them. Any four images you want, they will reside down here at the bottom of your page and can be linked anywhere. All you have to do is upload your image. When you click upload, it'll give you the exact same upload box that we recognize there you go. It'll give you the exact same upload box that you recognize from the pages. And like I said, you have four, four places to do that. Now, one of the things that is, is really cool is I, I got this idea because one of the users of the pet sitting system asked for it, and I thought it was just a fantastic idea. I'm just going to use this page as an example.
and this is this is really cool because we didn't save the page before it's telling me that there's a more recent version so that was one of the examples I was showing you all right while we are waiting for my connection to load um, comparing to earlier and we are gonna get right now to your questions in just a moment um, compared to earlier though what is what do you think your comfort level is now and be honest 1 to 10, what is your current comfort level using WordPress? Well, that is fantastic. That's great. I, um, I don't see any 1s or 2s. I see uh, a bunch of 4, 5, 6, and 7s. I mean, come on, 8s? That is great. Uh, Melanie says, I won't know it until I try it. Exactly. That's what I said. Fear not. Just, just dive in there and push some buttons. Rita says, I'm still fuzzy on SEO. Believe me, Rita, SEO is an entire topic unto itself. And uh, within the next few weeks, I actually, I actually, I actually am, am going to be having a, um, a webinar on, on, on SEO. But there, again, SEO, don't worry about SEO for this sake. It, it, it's, it's a whole beast unto itself, okay? Great. Well, I'm just thrilled to see that everybody uh, feels a little more comfortable or significantly comfortable. So the last thing I wanted to show you that we added, I know Shannon and crew over at Power Pet Sitter are no strangers to, oh no, wait, do I have it? Yeah, are no strangers to our industry. And because some of the users of my pet sitting website system asked for it, we were able to work with Shannon and integrate you know how everybody, if you use Power Pet Sitter or any of the other um, scheduling softwares, you want to embed the buttons onto your site, right, for new clients or returning clients to schedule. So what you can do here, you click on this little Pet Sittingology logo, and aside from giving you some other options, you'll notice a Power Pet Sitter option here. You have new clients button and existing clients button. Watch how easy this is. If I want to insert a new clients button, all I'm going to do is click new clients button. So I insert a, a new client button and this gives me customizable options. So I click a title and then you'll see on the top the preview I will take my power pet sitter user ID it's that four digit code or maybe three digit code at the end of your URL link so let's say it's one two nine one I choose the size of the button let's say I want to make this a little bigger up here you would enter in your power pet sitter user ID uh, create the size you could choose predefined colors or define your own background color. Let's say I want a little purple. In just a few clicks and a few customizable options here, you could insert on your page your Power Pet Sitter new clients or returning clients button. And uh, we we're just thrilled to work with Shannon on this. And uh, somebody asked, if I use a different scheduling system, how do I do the same thing as Power Pet Sitter? Well, right now, uh, Power Pet Sitter is the only option we have, but of course, we're ready, willing, and able to integrate the other ones in there. But that's not to say that you couldn't create uh, your own button and link it directly to your site. All right, so with that, we make our way back here and that wraps up the walking tour of WordPress. Now is the time we get to your questions. I do want to thank you all for, before we get to the questions, for uh, sticking with me, for participating. Gosh, I hope this has been helpful. Uh, let me see what questions I could start with here. Oh, 
Good question. Nikki asked when we were talking about the photos and editing the photos or even uploading a photo, she said, what is the difference in all the boxes under the photos? For example, title, alternate text, etc." That's a great question. Um, basically, your alternate text or your alt text, as it's called, is one of the another very important element of SEO. It does all go back to search engine optimization. Basically, whenever you see a space for alternate text, you want to you want to write in what the image is, what the picture is. So that way, because Google can't read pictures, so what they're going to read is your alt text. So if I have a picture of me and a client's dog, I might put the alt text as um, Alicia's animals pet sitter with client's dog. That's fine. And that gets in a couple of my keywords. You never want to keyword stuff. You just want to just, just write a couple of words of what the image is. And that's going to help Google. And if by chance the image doesn't load properly, your alt text will appear. So your user looking at your website will understand it. Yeah, I've heard this question a few times. Uh, basically, Ed is asking, uh, I currently am using Intuit website services. It is hard to switch off. Wait, is it hard to switch off of one website service to move to WordPress? Are there benefits that WordPress has that make it a better choice than Intuit? Thanks, Joshua. The workshop has been very helpful. Um, well, uh, a, a few questions there. Um, I, I have been asked a few times, how could I switch? How could I convert my my new site my, my current site to WordPress and if you're not currently using WordPress there's no real um, you know one-click way to switch it basically what you're gonna wind up doing is creating a WordPress website separately on a different server you know a, a different domain a, a different area online um, and you're going to basically have to recreate your pages. So if you have a services page, create a new page in WordPress called services, and then just basically you'll have to copy and paste your pages into the new WordPress platform. That's really the best and easiest way. Um, I could say you could, you could hire someone to do this. I'm sure for relatively inexpensive, you could probably find someone who would very very easily and and very uh, reputably transfer your current non WordPress pages to a WordPress website but there is no automatic way to do it it is sort of copying and pasting and recreating it that way Dan said I tried to log in at WP admin at the end of web URL and it went to my 404 page uh, in order to troubleshoot that Dan uh, if you want to email me at joshua at petsittingology.com and let me know uh, your exact URL and uh, I'll, I'll be able to better troubleshoot that for you. Jan's asking, can you change the font size on your website? Yes, indeed. On, uh, I mean, if depending on it, whether you're talking about the, the specific one I provide, the uh, pet sitter system, the answer is yes. But either way, yes, there are ways to easily increase the font size. You can do it page by page when you're on that page and you, you see all the, the bold, the italicized. You know what? There was, you're right. There was, that was one thing. Here we are. If everybody can see the screen, I'm sorry, I forgot this, this, this one point. Over here where it says paragraph, you could you could increase the size of your headings heading one heading two heading three four five and six and then if you want to increase the font size that is usually done with specific CSS code but if you're using this system that I provide it's possible in the theme options Yeah, Rita says, I, I noticed you don't have a cache page plugin. Do you recommend using one? Um, a cache page plugin is 
a plugin designed to speed up your pages by cacheing the content of it, which is just tech speak for being able to deliver it to your end user a little quicker. You know what's funny, Rita? I have had no luck with cache plugins. I have had the opposite result. I have had it slow down my site. So I my my site pages don't seem to be extremely heavy where shaving a couple of seconds, even if it's that, that a cache plugin would achieve, to me is just not even worth it. So um, that's just the reason that I don't personally recommend them or use them because I just, I, to me, they've, they've just seemed to become so much more involved and cumbersome than they're worth. Kayla wants to know, can I make a smaller can I make a video smaller on my website? It seems too big and hangs over the right side of the site. Well, it depends. Uh, the short answer is probably yes. If it's a YouTube video, you would just have to go back into the your YouTube control panel and under the embed feature, um, create it, uh, uh, make the make the size smaller right there. But I'm, I'm also not sure if if it's not YouTube. Um, any, if it's somewhere on like Vimeo or, or any, any place that it's hosted, uh, in the code should absolutely give you the option to, um, make it smaller. So, uh, if you want, again, um, send me an email, Joshua at PetSittingology.com. Give me the details, show me the site and I will, I'll show you exactly how to make it smaller. Sue Gianosa, um, I, I send me an email and I'll help troubleshoot that. Oh, Sherry said, Josh, I think you are amazing. Your company is so engaged with us and I really like that. Thank you so much, Sherry. It's a pleasure. Kim is saying, my site is currently on the WordPress platform. Would you be willing to go through and evaluate my site? I feel like my SEO is not working for me. Again, SEO is, is my other passion, you know, building websites and creating websites and improving and, and enhancing and, and all of this is, is, is one of my passions. SEO is included in all this, but it's a completely separate beast. I have, again, an entire webinar um, in the works that I will certainly do. So that's, that's how and when I could address that. Oh, Kayla's asking me, how did I get text on the image where it said, this is Buddy, earlier on when I showed the, uh, the gorgeous uh, lab and I had, this is Buddy. Uh, I just created that in Photoshop. Melanie, you are asking the question clearly. You write, if you find a WordPress template that you want to use and download it from the web, how do you upload it to your dashboard to be able to use it? I may not be I may not be asking the question clearly. Actually, you are, and the answer is in here. If you're looking at the screen, under appearance, you're going to go to themes. Themes are your templates, are your design. So right now, the theme we're using is obviously this. This is the theme. And then you can customize from here. So what she's asking, what you're asking, Melanie, is what if you have a new theme? There are thousands, some free, some paid, of themes you can use for uh, WordPress. Here's what you would do. You would go to themes. Here's where you can manage your themes. And here is where you install themes. It's all so easy. One click, you click on it, you upload your theme, and you're good to go. Now, just be careful, because if you're going from one theme to another, um, don't necessarily think that everything is going to come over and switch exactly how. Themes are unique to themselves, so just understand that there might be some adjusting you know, some things lost in translation, as they say. But that's the way you do it. Melanie asks, I'm currently using Fat Cow, which offers the option of using WordPress. This is a good question. If WordPress is free, why do I need Fat Cow? Well, if, if, I, if I know correctly, Fat Cow is a host. 
if Fat Cow is in fact a host, uh, you need a host um, in order to host the WordPress. So WordPress isn't a doesn't give you the website. WordPress just gives you the ability to run their software on your website. So you still do need a host to pay for it. All right, a few people are saying thank you. Have to leave. Have to go play in the rain and walk some pups. Okay. Rita says, if I didn't already have my site in WordPress, I definitely use your templates. Very great job. You did all the headbanging for them. LOL. Yes, uh, over a year in the making with the help of uh, a few dozen pet sitters to make sure we got it right. And we are still all ears. We're going to continue to get it right. We are always open to adding more features, benefits, and suggestions that really we, I, I want to make this the, the quintessential tool. You hear that? A big SAT word. Quintessential tool for pet sitters to, to, to use their, for, their, for their website. Excellent. Yeah, uh, silly me. Silly, silly me. Lisa says, hey, what is the charge for using the format you have for pet sitters? Great question. Uh, well, this link right here, petsittingology.com slash WP. Simply put, for WordPress, right? PetSittingology.com slash WP will take you to the information page and give you all the details about that pet sitting website system that we literally hand you out of the box. Everything you saw tonight, including all eight pages full of sample content, all default settings as you saw them today, already there, and the design, the layout, the training, the education, even the hosting we give you. You don't even have to pay a hosting bill. How amazing is that? The, the price for all of that is just $19 a month. And that includes everything I said, including the hosting, the support, the training, we have videos, we have uh, online documents, we have ongoing education, etc. So it is $19 a month, but I also have a special deal worked out because I'm part of APSE, the Association of Pet Sitting Excellence. Uh, any APSE member who signs up will get 15% off going, going forward, you know, every month. So you save 15% off that 19. Um, if you're a member of APSE, you, you received an email earlier this evening with the promo code, and it's also in our forums. If you look under the general section, under the forums, you'll see the promo code. So um, either way, I mean, I, if, I, I think it's a steal. $19 a month to get all-inclusive. Um, so that's it, petsittingology.com slash WP, and you can read all about it. Uh, Melanie's asking a good question. Will my website URL convert from another site builder if I cancel service from them? Uh, Vistaprint in parentheses. This is, this is the thing. This is really how it works. Because I know many of us have, have pet sitting websites already. So you might be thinking, okay, but if I sign up for yours, how does all that work? Very simply, you keep your current pet sitting website online exactly where it is. You sign up for our system. We then create that eight page setup for you on our servers and you will be given a different server domain name to work on your website sort of in the background. So your current website is not touched. In the meantime, on this new server, you are working to create your new website. When you are ready to go live with your new site, and stop directing traffic to your old site. All you have to do is update one setting in your domain name. And we'll handle that for you if you don't know how, but we give you the easy instructions. So basically, you're gonna go to your domain name registrar, whether it's GoDaddy or some other place where you bought your domain name, and you're gonna change one setting, and that's gonna point the domain name to your new site. So nothing happens with the domain name. We don't have to change that anywhere. And nothing happens to your old site except nothing points there anymore. So once we change that setting, all the traffic will then go to your new site. Teresa, welcome. Uh, she says, I missed the entire webinar, ran late with a client. Will there be a recording I can watch later? Absolutely. I'll send out an email when this is uh, all up and running. 
and I hope the meeting with the client went well. Thank you for the compliment, Lisa. And thank you, Nikki. All right. Well, with that, looks like we can wrap it up. Like I've said over and over, this is recorded, and I know there's a lot of information. I hope to see you around. If you want to get in touch with me, Joshua at PetSittingology.com. Please do check out that PetSittingology.com slash WP. I really thank you for attending and sticking with me. I look forward to keeping the conversation going. Enjoy the rest of the night.